Hi class, welcome to Advantage. My name is Matt Fisher and I'm your accounting instructor. All right, over the next several videos, we're going to be looking at writing off accounts receivable. Hopefully you recall that an accounts receivable is when we sell one of our products or services on account to a customer. So the customer hasn't paid us yet. All right. Now, if we have $200,000 worth of accounts receivable, there's a good chance that some of that is uncollectible, meaning some of those customers aren't going to pay us our money. So what do we do? Well, actually in accounting, there are several methods that we can follow in order to track or to, to record this bad debt expense, meaning if they're not going to pay us, we have to write it off and we write it off to bad debt expense. Now, the first method we're gonna look at is the direct write-off method, all right? The direct write-off method. Now, this method is not used by very many companies because it violates the expense recognition principle, all right? And I'll explain that a little bit later in this video. But first of all, let's take a look at it because some companies do use it and it's because they don't have a whole lot of accounts receivable that are written off or they plain just don't have a whole lot of accounts receivable, all right? So this method is the easiest, but like I said, it's just not used by very many companies. All right, so what happens is, let's say that we have an account receivable from a current customer and they owe us $1,000, okay? If they owe us $1,000 and we find out that they're not gonna pay us through all of our efforts, then we need to write this expense off. So the journal entry would be to debit bad debt expense. So this is a new account that we've not run into before. I'm going to abbreviate expense. And I said the, the accounts receivable was for $1,000. So there's the expense. And then we're going to credit, I'm going to abbreviate here, the accounts receivable for this customer. And we're going to credit that $1,000. So here's the journal entry to write off this, this bad debt expense, this accounts receivable that isn't going to be collected. At times, it will later be collected. It doesn't happen very often, but it can. So if it's later collected, so I'm going to put down here, later collected, this is the journal entry, and it's a double journal entry that we have to record. First of all, we got to reverse this out because we got the money. So first of all, we need to reestablish our accounts receivable for $1,000. And then we have to reverse out the bad debt expense. Now here, I'm just going to abbreviate because that's a long title. Okay, so there's the reestablishing of the accounts receivable and backing out the bad debt expense. And now, like I said, we received the money. So then we would record the original, I mean, the normal journal entry when we receive money from an account receivable. So then we would debit cash $1,000, and now we would eliminate the accounts receivable $1,000. You may be looking at these journal entries and say, I can do this in one journal entry. You know, because the accounts receivable here are the same. I could have just debited cash and credited bad debt expense. Well, really, you could have done that, but most accountants don't want to do that. They want to reestablish the accounts receivable to show that the accounts receivable is on the book and then to show what really took place, that they really paid us later. All right. OK, now I'm going to erase this and we're going to assume that it wasn't collected. Okay? And now I'm going to explain why the bad debt, why the direct write-off method isn't the best method to use, all right? And I like to look at a timeline, okay? So let's say this is year-end, December 31st. And let's assume that our sale took place in December. So our sale of $1,000 took place here. And once again, it was on account, so it's an account receivable, all right? But the write-off this journal entry might not have happened until February of the next year. So here is our sales or revenue, and here is our bad debt expense, right? And you can see here what's going to happen is our sales revenue is going to be too large in this year, and our expense will be too much in this year, right? We want to match these two. We want this expense to happen over here associated with that sale. So we had the sale of a thousand, we didn't collect it, so we had bad debt expense. So overall, we didn't have any profit whatsoever associated with that sale, okay? 
We're going to look at some of the allowance methods in the next videos. And from there, you'll see how we correct this and how we actually put the expense in the right time period by estimating our bad debts. All right, class, I hope this has helped you. Once again, this is the direct write-off method for bad debt expense. And in the next several videos, we'll be going over the allowance methods. All right, hope to see you soon. Thanks, class.